Hello, uh, it's Mrs Delaney again and welcome to a screencast on graphene and fullerenes. Okay, we're going to start as we start every lesson with a retrieval practice. So what I want you to do is name the type of structure and the type of bonding involved. So pause the video now and come back when you've done that. Okay, welcome back. Let's self-assess our work now. Okay, so the first one is graphite, and that is giant covalent bonding. Second one is diamond, that also is giant covalent bonding. The third one is a giant ionic lattice, and that is ionic bonding. D is a molecule, so that is simple covalent bonding. E is a metal and that is metallic bonding. So hopefully you've got those correct. Okay, so our learning objective today is to know the structure and uses of graphene and fullerenes. So we're going to look at what we mean by an allotrope. We're going to describe the properties of graphene, and then hopefully you will be able to link the structure to the properties for different allotropes of carbon. Okay, so what is an allotrope? Well, if you think about bars of chocolate in the image, what are the similarities and what are the differences? So just pause the video now and think about that. Okay, so if we think about bars of chocolate, the, thing, the ways that they are similar is that they all have chocolate in them. Now, some of them are solid chocolate, some of them have got chocolate inside, some of them have got chocolate on the outside. The differences are that they all have different structures. Some have fillings, some have wafers, they're different shapes, they're different hardnesses. And some of them haven't got anything else in them. They're just solid chocolate. So an allotrope of carbon is when it has different forms, but it's made of the same element. So carbon has different allotropes. We've already met them in a previous screencast, diamond and graphite. Their properties make them useful for different purposes. So what we mean by an allotrope are forms of an element that exist in the same state, solid, liquid or gas, but have different properties because the way that the atoms are arranged. So you can see that there and compare that to graphite. So they're both made of carbon, but because the atoms are arranged differently, they have different properties. We're going to look at this one in a minute. This is called graphene. And that is a fullerene and it's called a buckyball. That is a nanotube and that is also made of carbon. Okay, so a little recap of the structure and properties of diamond. In diamond, each carbon atom has four strong covalent bonds and it forms bonds with other carbon atoms. So it builds and builds and builds until it gets so much bigger and it forms a giant covalent structure. It has no delocalized electrons. So the melting and boiling point of diamond, if we remember, are very, very high due to a lot of strong covalent bonds between the carbon atoms. And that takes a lot of energy to overcome the strong covalent bonds. It does not conduct electricity due to having no delocalized electrons or ions that are free to move and carry a charge. In order for something to conduct electricity, there has to be a charged particle and they have to be able to move through the substance. It's hard because there are strong covalent bonds between the carbon atoms, meaning that a large force is needed to break the bonds. 
Right, if we look at graphite now. So in graphite, it's still made of carbon. It has three strong covalent bonds in hexagons. But the fourth bond is not made. And the fourth electron is a delocalized electron. So the structure is carbon atoms arranged in hexagonal layers. And those layers can slide over each other. But there are delocalized electrons in between the layers. So the melting and boiling point of graphite, because it's still a giant covalent substance, it takes a lot of energy to overcome the millions of strong covalent bonds. It does conduct electricity because there is a delocalized electron and that is able to move and carry the charge that's on the electron throughout the structure. It's soft and slippery because that between the layers of carbon atoms, there are weak intermolecular forces and the layers are able to slide over each other easily. Okay, so that is our first success criteria on allotropes. So now we're going to look at this substance, graphene. Okay, can you link these images together? What I want you to do is, maybe you do know the answer to this, but pause the video now and copy the YouTube link. And that's going to tell you something about a new substance and come back when you've done that. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed that video. Okay, so it told us about a substance called graphene. If you could separate graphite so that you have a single layer of interlocking hexagonal rings of carbon atoms, it would be just one atom thick. Scientists at Manchester University managed to do this in 2004 using a piece of sellotape. They stuck the tape across a piece of graphite and pulled it off over and over again and looked at the tape under a powerful electron microscope. They had managed to make the thinnest 2D material ever and they won the Nobel Prize for it. So let's look at graphene versus graphite. So how is it similar or different to that of graphite? So pause the video now and think about the th ways that they are similar and the ways that they're different. Okay, so the ways that they're similar is that they ha are both made of carbon. They are similar because they've got hexagonal rings of carbon. They're different insofar as the fact that they have got layers in graphite and they haven't, it's only one layer in graphene. Okay, we're going to do the same thing again. This was a video from The One Show. So I want you to pause the video again and watch this video. Think about what is graphene made from and what are the potential applications of graphene because it's very exciting. Okay, welcome back. I hope that you enjoyed that video. Okay, so to summarize the properties of graphene, it is an excellent conductor of electricity, much better than graphite. It is an excellent conductor of thermal energy. It has a low density, so that means it's very light. However, it's extremely strong for its mass. So it's stronger even than steel. Because it's only one layer thick, it's transparent and it's extremely flexible. Okay, so let's summarize the properties of graphene. It's made of one atom thick layer of graphite. Each carbon atom has three strong covalent bonds. So if we look at a carbon atom, we've got one bond, two bonds, three bonds, and it forms a hexagonal arrangement. So what effect does that have on its melting and boiling point? 
Well, it's very high due to the fact that we've got a lot of strong covalent bonds between the carbon atoms and it takes a lot of energy to overcome those covalent bonds. It's electrical conductivity. Well, we've still got that one delocalized electron so it can conduct electricity because it's got a charged electron that can move and carry the charge through the whole structure. Strong. Due to the strong covalent bonds between the carbon atoms, a large force is needed to break apart the bonds. So it's strong. It will not melt easily. It conducts electricity very, very well. Okay, so here's a comparison of some of the allotropes of carbon. So diamond has four covalent bonds. Graphite and graphene both have three. Description of the structure, diamond and graphite are both giant covalent. In diamond, you've got the four covalent bonds. In graphite, you have got three. So you've got layers of three covalent bonds between the carbon and they can slide over each other. In graphene, you've only got one layer of those hexagonal rings and the carbon atoms are joined with covalent bonds. The strength. So diamond is very strong. Graphite is weak because of those layers and graphene is very strong. Diamond does not conduct electricity, but graphite and graphene do. And the uses, well, diamond will be used for jewellery and cutting tools because it's very hard. Graphite is used for lubricants and we put it in pencils. And graphene has a lot of uses. We use it for things like phones, computers and batteries. OK, so I want you to pause the video now and answer these questions and come back when you've done that. OK, let's self-assess. So what properties does graphene have? So graphene is very strong, conducts electricity well due to the delocalized electrons and it's flexible. Describe the structure of graphene. It's made up of a layer of graphite that is one atom thick. The carbon atoms are joined to three other carbon atoms with strong covalent bonds and the delocalized electrons are left over and they are able to move. What could graphene be used for? Well, we can use it for phones, computers, tablets, electrical car batteries, sensors in the body. OK, so we are now able to describe the properties of graphene. Let's have a look at some more allotropes of carbon. OK, so there are other allotropes of carbon. There's a third class of carbon compounds that we need to know for our exam, and they are called fullerenes. A fullerene is the general name for a hollow shaped molecule of carbon. Now those shapes can be spheres, so they're round, rugby ball shaped, donuts, cones, onions, which are spheres within a sphere, and tubes. And those tubes can either be open at the end or closed at the end. They are large but they are not classified as giant structures. OK, so here's one of the first ones to be discovered. It was called Buckminster Fullerene. OK, so Buckminster Fullerene is one type of fullerene. It contains 60 carbon atoms, and that's why we don't classify it as a giant structure. Those 60 carbon atoms are each bonded to three others by three covalent bonds. The atoms in this allotrope of carbon form a sphere like a football. The molecules can be called buckyballs. The structure of fullerenes like Buckminster fullerene is based on hexagonal rings of carbon atoms, as in graphite, graphene. However, they also can have five rings or seven rings of carbon atoms. So here's a few of those. 
What can we use fullerenes for? They can be used for drug delivery into the body. They can be used as lubricants and they can be used as catalysts. Okay, so here's another class called carbon nanotubes. These are also fullerenes. So the cylindrical fullerenes are called carbon nanotubes and they are tubes of carbon hexagons like sheets of graphene rolled into cylinders. They have many useful properties. They have a very high tensile strength. That means a pulling force, right? So they, they have a strong resistance to pulling. They have unique electrical properties. They have good heat conductance. There are some multi-walled nanotubes. In these, several tubes can rotate and slide within each other almost without friction. We can also attach metal atoms to the outer surface of the tubes. Okay, so how can we use carbon nanotubes? Can we make any use of the properties? Well, due to their high tensile strength and low density, so how light they are, they can be used to reinforce tennis racket handles. Due to their excellent electrical conductivity and thermal conductivity like graphene, because they have delocalized electrons, they can be used extensively in the electronics industry. Now here's some future uses of fullerenes that they are actually working on now. They're looking into non-stick slippery coatings for machinery, which act like miniature ball bearings because they can roll over each other. They are looking into cages to hold drug molecules and they can be delivered directly into the body. They're looking into molecular sieves, which trap large particles like viruses while allowing smaller healthy particles to pass through. And they're looking into the chemical sponges to soak up toxic substances in the body. So we've got an awful lot of really good ideas that are being researched by scientists at the moment. OK, so here's a summary of fullerenes and nanotubes. So each of them has carbon atoms with three covalent bonds with other carbon atoms. Now in fullerenes, shaped like a sphere, the, they can be used as lubricants. And the reason they can be used as lubricants is that they are spherical and they can roll over each other. They can be used as a catalyst. Now a catalyst will work well if it has a high surface area to volume ratio and that will be able to speed up chemical reactions. They can be used in medicine, but they can be used as a cage so because they're hollow and we can put other things inside them to deliver drugs to the body. Right, the nanotubes are cylinders. They can be used for strengthening materials because they have a high tensile strength so they don't break when stretched. And they can be used in the electronics industry to conduct electricity because they've got the delocalized electrons for each carbon atom and they are small so they can be used in microchips. Okay, so let's have a look at our second checkpoint. Pause the video now and answer the questions and then come back when you've answered it. Okay, so let's self-assess that work. Okay, so what is a fullerene? A fullerene is a hollow molecule consisting of carbon atoms only. What is the structure of the fullerene C60? That is 60 carbon atoms arranged in a sphere, like a ball, made with hexagonal rings of carbon atoms. What other numbers of carbon atoms can be used to make rings? Well, we said we can use pentagons, they're five-sided, or heptagons, seven-sided. 
state why spherical fullerenes would make good lubricants. They make good lubricants because they can roll over each other. Okay, so here's some more questions about nanotubes. So pause the video now and come back when you've answered these questions. Okay, so let's self-assess these questions. What do we call cylindrical fullerenes? We call them carb. Okay, so let's self-assess our work. What do we call cylindrical fullerenes? We call them carbon nanotubes. Why are nanotubes used to make tennis rackets? They have a high tensile strength. That means that they can withstand a high force until they break. And they are also very light. Why are carbon nanotubes good conductors of electricity? They're good conductors of electricity because they have delocalized electrons that can move through the carbon nanotube and carry electrical charge. Okay, so this is the final checkpoint now. I want you to read through the questions, pause the video, and then come back when you've answered the questions. Okay, so let's self-assess that work. Explain why graphene is strong. It's strong because each carbon atom in graphene is joined to three other atoms with strong covalent bonds. These need a lot of energy to be broken. Explain why graphene can conduct electricity. Graphene can conduct electricity because it has delocalized electrons which can, which can move through the structure. Suggest why a sheet of graphite, which has a large number of carbon layers, would not be suitable for a touch screen because the material is opaque. That means it's not transparent due to the many layers of graphene in graphite. Also, it has many layers, so it could rub off easily because those layers move. Graphite is made of many layers of graphene. Explain why graphite is used as a lubricant. So graphite is used as a lubricant because there are weak forces between the layers. So the layers can slip and slide. Okay, so that's our final success criteria. Hopefully you have a better understanding of graphene and fullerenes. Thank you for joining the screencast.